transparency of Groom Lake. Groom Lake is where the infamous Area 51, S4, S2, a CIA base, uh, uh, it was originally a bombing range, a nuclear test site. Uh, it was later become the most secret base in the United States. Um, it employs over 18,000 workers who work in shifts of 12 hours a, at a whack. Most of them work in the cover of darkness, like us. We built out nine underground military bases there, each with an average uh, uh, capacity, capable of uh, basically a city underground, roughly four and a quarter cubic miles hollowed out underground. They have boring machines, for instance. They have boring machines, for instance. They don't bore. They literally vitrify and melt the rock, deflagrate the rock. It's a very sophisticated laser. Uh, uh, melting and deflagrating system. It reduces the rock to a powder and then melts the, the remaining rock as a coating on the inside of the base so you don't have to use gunite cements and other kinds of things like that. That's all, the, all old hat now. Uh, technology is so just basically the new technology we get is the old hat of the military. I'm going to be real brief about it. I carried a level one security clearance, the Rylite 38 factor. There are very few of us there's nobody except myself, to my knowledge, talking like this. <clears throat> nobody. I'm breaking the law. I'm breaking world as well as federal law. I'm coming out and even talking about this to a group of people. I love my country more than I love my life. Two weeks ago, I was shot in the shoulder. I don't want to gore you women out, but I was shot in the shoulder up here. I recently have become friends of a of a uh, retired FBI agent who took me under the wing. He says, I've never seen a person braver than you. And I said, well, there's more coming. Our patriot movement in these United States is going to pick up the ball, and we are going to kick the parasites out. First of all, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, a few other founding fathers, Patrick Henry to mention a few, all had visions that these United States was going to live 700 years from where they were standing, and that was uh, somewhere around the, uh, the late 1700s, early 1800s. So you can count this country, this country isn't going to go to a new world order. I believe firmly in constitutional law. I'm not very well skilled in it, and that's my embarrassment. But I'm going to be real blunt about it. The government that is now instilled in ruling over us are ruling as we're serfs, and they're the kings and queens. Now, that's a feudal system. That isn't even a democracy. We are now being ruled by an autocracy and a technocracy. In other words, technical knowledge is rules as king with a feudal type system. Feudal systems haven't been used in the last 350 years, and they're coming back like gangbusters. If we are complacent, if we do not speak out in droves, and I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking about a bunch of us getting together and getting on the stump and loving our country more than we love our lives, getting on, some of us are going to get killed. I almost got killed a couple of weeks ago. I hadn't been for a, uh, hadn't been for an FBI, a retired FBI man who risked his life, his career, everything, put it all on the line, and he didn't know me from Adam a week prior to that. Uh, he, he, re he listened to one of my tapes I gave up in Post Falls, Idaho, and I'm going to be very blunt about He mentioned, he said that we need a lot more of you, but unfortunately we're not getting anybody. Well, I'm trying to, I'm not the best speaker in the world, but I'm trying to relay to you that we need to get out and seriously get the message out. These shows are great. 
this this hall should be absolutely packed, standing room only, and we should be getting the message out to as many people as we can with as many shows as there are is it possibly to reach. The many is the public. We ought to get on talk shows. We've got to get on. We've got to get on news shows and TV shows, and we have to really get the message out. And I think we're doing it, but it's it's a little bit slow in the in the first part. That's that's just that part of the what I want to say. In working with the Black Projects, I was very loyal. I was picked because I was very strong mentally. There's a bunch of us that were picked because we don't crack under pressure. We don't freak under pressure, so to speak. Everyday events don't bother us. Now, I was involved in something very controversial, almost totally unbelievable to most of you. Some of you are religious people. I think all religions, all religions, have a time and a place, and they definitely have a place in America. Now, another thing I want to reach to you is that during the unbelievable part, I was involved in building another base onto in inside of Dulce, New Mexico, which is Los Alamos Laboratory. It's a biological laboratory. On the southwest part of the Archuleta Mesa, uh, we built an underground facility, a better part of three cubic miles hollowed out underground. Then to the southwest of that, we built, we were, we were in the process of the early stages of building, we drilled four large uh, tunnel-like holes. Some of them ran two and a half miles under the surface. Uh, number the early at that time. Number the original uh, uh, wells or dr uh, drilling uh, machines that were used were were um, uh, at the rate of up uh, two miles a day. It was fairly rapid. The equipment kept coming up broken. So we wanted to go down. We wanted to send somebody down there, a human observer or human observers in this case, to find out what was going on. Well, to our total surprise, first of all, the government knew all about it. They didn't tell anybody. Uh, when I saw Green Beret and Black Beret people encamped inside of our geologist camp, I knew something was up, the gig was up. First of all, I knew all about the alien agenda. I'll explain that in a few minutes. The large alien graves had been encamped there for as best as believed possible about four or five hundred years. It had been one of their internal bases. And we'd, we'd drilled holes right on top of it. All the stinking air, all the black sooty air came right out as soon as one of the first hole was sunk and all this soot came up and, well, that's when it all, all the hell broke loose, really, all it started. Anyway, after we drilled all four holes, it took about a, two days to drill all four of them. And when you build an underground base, you drill four basic holes, and then you build you know, called stopes or cross-member holes across, and then you bla use blasting equipment, you know, special blasting equipment by the analyzation of the rock formation, and you literally blast out or tunnel out or, or deflagrate or melt rock out to build the large rooms that are required for this underground base. Well, in this process, I was lowered down the basket of one of these holes, and about from me to this elderly woman here in the front was sitting a seven-foot-tall alien gray. The stench was worse than the worst garbage can you can imagine. Uh, the person was at, or the entity was absolutely horrible. I didn't waste any time. I reached for my pistol. At that time, as an engineer, I didn't have time to carry all the folder, all of one of these big submachine guns that all the sea spray and the yellow fruit and the, all the uh, outer perimeter and inner perimeter security people carried. I carried a little Walter PPK pistol with a nine-shot clip. <clears throat> this was in late August of 1979. Now. You got a regular suit of clothes. You got a regular clothes on. Plus, you're in a almost like a spacesuit environment, and you're reaching for a gun. It's it's not the easiest thing to do, and then to pop a clip in it and start shooting. And 
I killed two of them. Yes, they're mortal and they do die. However, in the process, 